After we check the registration status of a user, we can ask them to log into our application. Authorization can happen in a few ways. We can choose to make our application visible to any user, regardless of whether they're logged into Facebook or not, and this is what we've already done in the movie Creating a Basic App page. We can also choose to show a normal version of our app to some users and a more enhanced version to users who are logged in. Finally, we can require anyone who comes into our page to log into Facebook. Let's take a look at some simple authentication with the fb.login method. So if you go to the JavaScript developer section of Facebook developers, you can see a function down here if you scroll down a bit called fblogin. And this is the one that we're interested in adding to our application. It's a pretty simple function. You call it and it prompts the user to authenticate your app using a dialog. I have a slightly simpler version of this function and I'm going to switch over to bbedit. Also open up transmit and I want to open my JavaScript file right here. I'm going to code snippets and I'm going to grab a super simple version of that function. It just says log in a user, go back into my script and I want to put it right here where if a user is not authorized to use our application, I'm going to ask the user to authorize it with a FB login call. So to save that, and I'm going to go back into my application on Safari, and I will refresh. If nothing happened, it's because Safari is blocking pop-up windows. And that's one of the problems with using the function like this. It causes the browser to launch a pop-up window. And because of years of pop-up misuse, most of the browsers have learned to block them. So if you use this method, people might not see the dialog come up at all. For that reason, FB login should be called as a result of a click. We'll do that in a minute. First, I'm going to show you that we'll undo block pop-up windows. And I'll refresh. And we should see the authorization dialog come up. And there it is. Now, the other problem with this method is that it will only retrieve the basic information from the user. So it shows things like their ID, name, picture, and other things depending on their privacy settings. Basic permissions are not too exciting, so we can add permissions to our call by adding them to our FB logging in the scope variable. I'm going to hit cancel here, go back into BB Edit, and I will grab a different version of the FB login function like this. You can see that this uses a JSON-like object to add the scope variable where I can type in a number of different permissions I want. So I'll copy that back into my script. I'll replace this one with that one and indent it a little bit. Let's see, let's get rid of that. I'll save it, go back into my app. I'll refresh the page, wait for it. There it is. And now you can see that it's asking not only for my basic info, but my email address as well as my likes. Now, you might be asking yourself, where can I find all the different permissions that I can ask for? I'm going to hit cancel here. And I'm going to go into the permissions reference. So at this URL, you can find all the different kinds of permissions that you can ask for in your application. You might be tempted to ask for all permissions. And although you can do that, people are wary of giving certain types of information. And you should know that the more things you ask for, the less likely people are to install your application. Asking for certain things like email addresses will dramatically lower your chances of people installing your app. So we need to deal with the pop-up problem. As I mentioned, because a lot of browsers block pop-ups, you should make the FB login call when a user clicks on a link. This way you can also choose to show a version of the page to users who are logged in and a different version to users who are not. So let's do that. We're going to go back into BB Edit and also pull up Transmit because I'm going to need to open a few other files. I'm going to need the index.php as well as the style sheet. I already have the script open, so I'm going to open those two. And the first thing I need to do is make sure I replace the monogram with some content. So I'll grab this. The monogram was just a picture that was at the top of the application, which is right there. And I'll paste this over here. So what we're doing here is we are creating two different sections one that people will see if they're logged off and one that people will see if they're logged in. So if a user is logged off, they'll get this welcome message and it has a link they can click on to a function that we're going to create a bit later. So I'm going to save that. The next thing I need is to make sure that not everything is showing up when somebody loads the page, but just the parts that I want. So back into code snippets, 
and I want to grab these styles. So by default, the logged off section is going to be on or displayed, and the logged in section is going to not be displayed. We're going to assume that people are logged off when they come to our application. So I'll copy that, go into mystyle.css, save it. Okay, so we've got that. The next thing we need is the actual go login function that we're calling when somebody clicks. So I'm going to grab this right here and copy it, go back into my script. I'm going to take out this login function because I don't want to automatically pop up the window anyways. What I want to do is just put this function outside of the async init. So this is the function that executes as soon as the SDK has been loaded. So I need it to just be a regular function that's going to go outside that. Let me delete that. And you probably want to comment this a little bit better. When functions start looking like this, it's a little bit confusing as to what goes with what. So I'm going to type in a comment here, put FB async in it right there, and make sure I put in this goes with get login status. All right, so I'll add that comment, and this one is response Oops, status. I just want to make sure I comment it, so double slash. So now it's a little bit better because I can read what's what, um, and that's a good practice when you're coding some of these pages. So as soon as somebody clicks on this, it's going to call the FB login function and also turn on the logged in section or the logged in class and turn off the logged off class so people will see the proper things. It's still asking for the same permissions. So let's save that and let's go back into Safari, back into our app, and we'll reload this. You can see the logged off version of the application right now. In order to log in, we'll have to click on login and Here's the same permissions. We'll hit play game. Now that we've authorized our app, you can see the app with the logged in stuff showing. And that's pretty cool, but there's a problem with this app. Let me go ahead and refresh the page and show you what's happening. So if I refresh the page, even though I'm logged in, the application thinks I'm not logged in, or at least it's showing me the things that I should see when I'm logged off. So let's switch back to BB Edit. That's because when it executes a reload of the page, it goes through all this stuff right here, and it notices that we are connected, creates the user ID and the access token, but it never gets to the part right here where I'm hiding the different elements. So I need to make sure that I copy that and I paste it right here to make sure that I turn things on and off properly and save that. That's also in the code snippets at the very end. So actually, this is wrong right here. Let me paste that there, save it. And I'll come over here, and if I refresh the page, I should see the logged in version. You're going to see the logged off version for just a little bit. You could fix that by messing around with the CSS files and controlling what people see when they log in and what people see when they're logged off. So this way, we've got a pretty sophisticated login system that makes your content available to users who are logged in or out of your app. and you can choose to show different things depending on a user status.